Yo, yo, what's up, what's up? I'm John Leguizamo, and this is a first look at Leguizamo Does America. Leguizamo Does America was a passion project of mine for the, forever, to go deep in America and find Latin excellence and Latin exceptionalism, because I know it was all around me all the time. In this series, I get to go to six of my favorite cities in America that are deep in Latinx. Uh, Miami, New York, D.C., Puerto Rico, Chicago, and L.A. And I find incredible Latin people all over America. I find chefs, artists, dancers, directors, actors, entrepreneurs, uh, y you name it. They're all over, and I get to talk to them and, and do a deep dive on their lives, how they got it, what's their formula of success, what, what's been holding them back. I get to ask the real questions of how hard it is to be Latinx in, in America. <laughs> New York City would not exist without Latinos. We're equal to whites in population size. White people are 30 percent. We're 28 point something percent. And pretty soon we're going to be the largest ethnic group in New York. And we're moving the city. We're moving it. We're cooking for you. We're delivering your packages. We're creating culture. The first immigrant to New York City was a Latino in the 1600s. Juan Rodriguez, who was Dominican. We've been here forever. Right here, this is the building I grew up in on apartment 4A. And it was incredible because the subway is like right there. So we'd be watching TV like a murder mystery. And they'd be tell about to tell you, you know, and the murder of the... <laughs> and I would hear. So that's how I learned how to write. Because I just had to make up my own stories. Manhattan was like Oz, you know. It was there. It was something to, to achieve. It was something better. You know, it was someplace, but it was close enough, you know what I mean? So you could always dip your toe into what wealthy people and people who had privilege, you saw it. And you could smell it and taste it and go, God, you wanted it so bad because you could mingle with it. You just couldn't, you know, get into it. It's always interesting to go back to where you grew up because it always looks so much smaller and dingier. And, and, and when I went back to Jackson, I, I was like, you know... It, it, it's a transition neighborhood, you know. It's a place where immigrants come, and and you you and you get out. So you know, it's good. I, I like going back there because it reminds me of my humble origins and how far I've gone and, and and made it. You know, by pulling myself up by my bootstraps, and my, my bootstraps ripped. I think. <laughs> So check it out. New York City is one of the most influential places in the entire world. People find inspiration here when it comes to everything, food, music, and especially fashion. But did you know that a lot of the coolest New York City fashion was invented by kids in the hood? That's right. Just 30 years ago, street style was maligned and shunned by mainstream society. But the world has caught up. And major fashion brands are making millions of dollars making streetwear often inspired by styles originating in black and brown communities. I'm about to meet up with Raul Lopez, Brooklyn native and designer behind Loire, who is taking street style back and finally getting the recognition he deserves. How cool is this place? Oh, these are the famous purses, huh? Yeah, man. The it bag. The it bag. Do a lipa had one or something? Do I have one? Solange. Uh... Solange had one too? Latin culture, hip hop culture, ghetto culture has always been the big influencer in fashion, whether they like to admit it or not. And, and it was so good to, to go in there and investigate that. The origins of that contribution from the onset of it happening on the street to getting into the garment industry. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Oh my god, I look muscular. Yo, Raul is cheap. I didn't get to take any of that stuff home. I thought he was gonna send me like a care package or or give me some swag. Nuh uh. Tony Touch and other DJs played their tapes in clubs around the city. But hip-hop's big breakthrough happened even earlier in 1977 when lightning struck. No, no, I mean literally. Like, lightning struck and knocked out the power to most of the city. It all happened in 1977. 
And the blackout did what? It boosted hip hop, because now all everybody was robbing the electronic stores. So now we had like a thousand DJs in New York. Once all those new DJs started creating beats, the rap battles were on. Everybody's competing because there's too many turntables around, and that's how rap begins. It's incredible. incredible. Like I said, we couldn't afford the equipment, and as soon as the lights went out, everybody had equipment. We went right for mm, the DJ equipment, that. bro. Latin and black culture, when we're together, we, we accomplish so much. And this was that moment. Hip hop is black culture. And we just assisted. You know, we did a Skype pippin' to a Michael Jordan. Uh, and, and we were there, you know, we were there as, as photographers of it. We were there as, as inventors of break dancing, DJs as well. I think people should watch the series because they're going to be turned on by what's happening in America. Like everywhere in America where Latinx people are succeeding, making inroads, making this country run and, and moving the culture forward. Hey, thanks for watching. You can catch the full length episodes starting April 16th at 10 p.m. Eastern and the next day on Peacock. Hey, it's going to be legit. I'm telling you, it's going to be fire.